There we go. Got a got a thick, nice thick little staircase. Let's put that in the ground there. Let's bring the waypoint. I'm so used to playing like games like Roller T Coaster Tycoon and moving these things around. It can be a little. You can do smart uh, where where it moves it specifically. So then, if you're wondering where this will spawn, let's see here. Let's go up. I'm doing it more the archaic way, so just don't mind me, and then we move it right there. And there's a sticky, where you can make it sticky and make smart on objects. You can mess with that. But as you get better with this, you start to improve. This is kind of the bare bones version of it, so I hit play. Let me hop in there. You're going to see those staircases over now and now to the right. You can change the color of them, really organize this, really make this yours. Make this your scenario, what you need to work on. So I'm going to flick. Ooh, flew over there. There he's over there. This is like a quake scenario, man. As you're flicking between various targets, you can you don't have to make it shoot up to the sky either. Like I mentioned, you can change its its projectile and how much it's going up in the air. And you can even do them individually if you like. Let's say I only wanted to bounce just a little bit, make it more of a, a micro scenario. Let's say we really wanted to fo work on a, a nice broad movement and make this a, an interesting mini flick. You get go for long flick, then mini flick, and like really start to test out those those arms you know what i mean and then go right into a small movement that's probably one that i would personally want to work on hit save hit play go right back in it recommend saving your work and let's hop into it here see how it's little i might need to do it a little bit higher actually but you see you see what i mean if you can get it just a little bit higher up there so then there's a little bit more oomph to it you could even change where hit points change and everything you get really granular with it right now i figured i kind of keep it a little bare bones but you do have that option available for you Let's, i just want to get the boss just right now now that i'm kind of in it now i'm addicted to it now i want to see it just kind of done at the end of the day let's do one to two point three and just throw a random interval there really throw ourselves off and we hit play And then we're going to go right into it. And remember, you can put these bots. So if you think you can copy, bind. There you go. See how they're bouncing a little bit? Go from a broad movement to a micro one. Because sometimes you... Like, let's say you have issues with... Because AimLab is really good about telling you where your weak spot is, whether it's on the left or on the right. Let's say you want to focus specifically on the left and right movement. This would be one of the, like with a broader stroke. Or let's say it's a micro movement. You move them right next to each other. You go boom, boom, boom. Or you add like ten different bots. Where it goes here, here, here. And you want to randomize it and change it. You can definitely do that. And hopefully by showcasing this and enjoying going back and forth between various targets, you see just how not overwhelming it is. I know I kind of started off maybe overwhelming with just putting walls, like <laughs> the time to make something pretty to put yourself in a little box. And then I know that they showcase memes like you want to throw a giraffe in there. Let's throw a giraffe. Let me see if I can throw a giraffe in here. Do they have those? I know there's the stationary. Let's put a giraffe because it's cute. Buildings and structure. Ah, decorative. There we go. Let's do village. Let's do nature. City animals. You can put a cat in here. That's crazy. I know the giraffe. I like the giraffe. I'm looking for the giraffe. Jungle animals. There it is. There's a giraffe. And there you go. You got yourself a little giraffe. Let's make it a big giraffe. Just for the memes right before we, we wrap up here. Make a long giraffe. Make a chunky one. Well, let's, let's add two giraffes. We're going to make a chunky one. And then we're going to make a, a long boy one. There we go. You hop in game. You can move around. I, 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 I so much prefer staying stationary. That's a personal preference whenever I'm aiming. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You have such two dr dramatic versions. You have such a long, you got a long boy and you got a short boy. And you have both of them there, and they're yours forever. You can shoot them, but it won't do anything. Just drop your accuracy. And there you have it. So we've covered for the past. We covered quite a bit today. We discussed. We were reviewing some of the maps. Remember, you can change the maps and add. Your, let's say you wanted to add a giraffe onto Valhaven, if you like. Now we discussed buying. We discussed the Rainbow Six Siege map, Valhaven. You talked about the custom weapons, which we discussed briefly. You know, you have a lot of weapons. You can change. You can even create your own recoil, if you like, with various weapons that you make. 
and they'll all show up here. You know, you have the scar, lightning gun, orb, you know, pulse rifles, anything, anything and everything is here. I mean, there's so much customization. It may, some of it may take a little longer, but in the long run, I mean, it's yours. And it, 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 aim lab becomes more of your tool, right? Now we kind of discussed briefly smart bots and what it can do. Uh, just kind of covered a little bit more high level, and you can add the textures here. So we click on this and go to the bot. Let's say we were to add another one back in. Add another one back in. But SmartBot is there to kind of add some intervals, to kind of do a little bit more than just having to constantly program everything. But of course, even on the list, as you look at the various bots, and let's bring another one of these in. Let's go to Point Spawner. I'm going to start a bot here. Let's go to New. SmartBot, check that off. Let's say you want to do, let's do Humanoid. SmartBot overrides 8080, dodge, jump, orbit. You know, it, it, it'll rise 8080, dodge, jump, orbit. You know, it, it'll it'll do some things for you. It's very advanced, and there's so much here. Look at this. There's so much here that it can do for you. So you don't have to always just, so it just doesn't feel so cookie cutter. The SmartBot does add so much versatility to it. So definitely check that out, especially with the 8080 one. I think that one's probably the coolest. That one makes a whole lot of sense, but that one is here. And it's where you see when you type in new, let's actually go to load. And I know you see the community has created a lot of these. Dust 2 straight bot, HQ bot, HUD smooth, strafe apex sphere. So if you're into the apex legends, like we're talking about a tracking scenario. I know I did one that was kind of bare where you're looking for like more thin gauntlet, which is in my opinion, the most famous of like improving tracking. But you know, if you're into apex like I am, then you have that bot there. We discussed the five tracking scenarios within siege which were Siege Entry, Siege C4 Arc, Siege Capacity. We had Siege Detection Shot, Siege Audio Spatial 45, and then of course we discussed the new tracking scenarios that are really beneficial to help you out, which is Sphere Track 90, Arc Track, Star Track, Micro Start Track, and the Reactive Track. All there available for you as well. We just reviewed some of the crosshair settings, and then we built a flicking scenario and a tracking scenario. So we really did a lot here, and then we ended up here at the very end where we have this gigantic long giraffe so we'll say goodbye to george here we thank you so much for watching hopefully you learned a whole lot hopefully we we're able to give a lot of tips a lot of advice as you watched and we're able to provide a lot of context of things we really look forward don't be intimidated if you're a beginner intermediate or advanced just go and have some fun learn a whole lot about aim lab it's free can't really beat free when you can add a free giraffe named george we appreciate free when you can add a free giraffe named george we appreciate you guys for watching we look forward to seeing you guys all next time Hello and welcome to Aim Lab. Today we're going to cover quite a bit. If you're a beginner, if you're intermediate, advanced, we welcome you because today we're going to review some of the Creator Studio's features such as various maps such as Bind or Valhaven. We're going to discuss the custom weapons in the Creator Studio, some of the smart bots. We're going to enjoy a lot of the tasks. We're going to go through them together. We're going to talk about the pros and cons of what you can learn. We're going to review some of the crosshair outlines. We're going to build a flicking task within the Creator Studio. And we're even going to build a tracking task. And don't worry why all of this is going to feel very overwhelming at first. We're going to take it slow. We're going to enjoy the journey together. And it doesn't matter if you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced user. Because today we're going to break down everything with an aim lab that I discussed. And make sure that this takes you on a healthy journey as you look to improve your aim. Now remember some of the biggest things, let's go ahead and add a few of these scenarios. We're going to start with some of the fun stuff first. We're going to start with the scenarios. Remember that even if you go to a gym, I'm going to relate this heavily towards being and working out in a gym, maybe you're one of the fastest runners in the world. Maybe perhaps you can lift the most. A lot of these scenarios you will find perhaps you are one of the fastest runners. Maybe you're just one of the fastest at flicking. But maybe you don't have the speed to really back it up. Maybe you, you need to work on that. Maybe you need to work on your precision. Maybe you need to work. Overall, your goal is to improve your mouse control. And the plus side, even with Aim Lab, is that you can utilize controller functionality. So let's start with some of these scenarios. Let's go with Sphere Track 90, Arc Track, Star Track, Micro Start Track, as well as Reactive Track. So I have all these. We're going to cover every single one of them and go really in-depth. And we're going to do this Without doing multiple takes, you're going to see just raw aim and everything that we're going to discuss with it. Let's start start with Sphere Track 90. I really enjoy a lot of these new scenarios, and I've put a lot of time into them so far. They're a whole lot of fun and enjoyable. Remember, even with your settings and enjoyable. Remember, even with your settings, 
as you hop in to aim lab as you can tell you can go to your options and change your crosshair that we mentioned before you can change the opacity so you get more of a little bit of an outline there you can change the length of it you can make it a little smaller kind of like what you see on valorant or csgo you can change the th thickness if you like right now we kind of have that little bit of a healthy medium in the crosshair i'm going to save that if we go back to the screen here just know that you have a lot of functionality at your disposal So in this first scenario, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply just start tracking, and then we're going to break down everything that we saw here. I'll do my best to kind of talk throughout some of the scenarios. Some of them we'll just kind of let run, see what mistakes we make. And then we'll break down everything. As we continue onwards, we'll break down the specific scenario first and kind of talk in depth. I really wanted to get us first right into the nitty-gritty of Aim Lab because there's so much here to break down gritty of aim lab because there's so much here to break down scenarios will last a predetermined amount of time so this is your first time on aim lab you can see here as we're tracking something within our 90 degree peripheral you don't have to hold mouse one all you're going to do is simply track sometimes you'll have better days than others and even while talking is a great exercise as we're talking now talking can be very important especially when you're calming in a video game so maybe you might have a friend next to you where you can have some so maybe you might have a friend next to you where you can have some calming and communication so right there we got top placement which is not half bad considering we were talking through it uh, we can definitely work to improve and everything that we're doing because talking can definitely make it a lot more of a struggle and you'll continue to get better and better as you do this so what you saw there was skirt track 90 ultimate which is perfect for scenarios where you're tracking individuals right in front of you maybe it's like apex legends quake or various games where the target seems to be floating whether it's horizon popping or q maybe you're in quake and you're you know doing your rocket jumps and kind of bouncing around sphere track 90 ultimate is going to be a fantastic scenario to getting you comfortable within the 90 degree surface right in front of you this is maybe something that you might not be useful let's say if you're playing csgo or perhaps if you're playing rainbow six siege you may not be used to that full range of motion specifically where targets you've been very much taught in csgo or rainbow six siege that you do not need to move above head level when well, certain games you might need to expand upon that sphere track 90 will get used to those that muscle control and even as we saw there we got used to it. I put mine on practice quite a bit. I don't log a ton of my scores. So this, while this says third play of this task, if you don't, if you feel really nervous about getting on the leaderboard, you probably saw it before, but don't be shy. You can always click on it and avoid putting this task on the leaderboard. And of course, maybe there's scenarios that you may play less. I know there's quite a few that'll play less, but I one of them that's coming up is one of my favorites. I think I have over 50 attempts on that I really, really enjoy specifically just because it really hones in on my aim. So let's go to the next task here. Arc track is a fantastic scenario where individual players in front of you will arc. And this is really, really helpful to improving and stabilize your aim because most targets are not going to just hover left and right strafes. And let's just go ahead and showcase. Strafes. And let's just go ahead and showcase that for all of you guys here. So what you want to do is work to keep your hand as stable as possible. And if you have any sort of jittering, all it means is perhaps you're not warmed up. And it's why you do the scenario. You'll have moments of brilliance as you're tracking. As you're really kind of hitting your groove. And you'll have moments where you may not be as on point. not a bad run when we look at the breakdown on the leaderboards if I put in just a little bit of time it would easily break a top 100 score on this not one I definitely focus on it, now that I play it <laughs> I kind of feel like I might need to put a little more time and effort into this one compared to the micro track one let's do that one I know that one I have an easy top 100 on but arc track is very beneficial towards your aim to helping smooth out 
the arc that you have with your with your aim. So it's not just left and right, up and down, but realizing that individual characters or players when they're jumping in front of you do have an arc to their overall movement. So let's go on into the next task here. Start track is fantastic for getting used to a nice stable movement bouncing left and right. You'll see the points bounce left and right. This is a really fun one. I really bounce left and right. This is a really fun one. I really enjoy this scenario. This is great for beginners when you're trying to create mouse stability from various areas. Not a bad run. So tips and advice as you're working on this. And again, that was almost a top 100 score right there even. Another one I really enjoy. I know I've broken a top 100 before. I think I was probably did under practice. One of the biggest things here, I'm actually u utilizing a new sensitivity. Don't be afraid to practice and utilize a new sensitivity if you need it. It can be extremely beneficial to utilize a new sensitivity and realize, okay, maybe I need to go a little faster and go a little slower. In today's exercise, I'm utilizing a new one, which my sensitivity is 15.5 inches per 360 compared to where I was at. I think it was 13.42. So, But what I like about this sensitivity is that, as you can tell, it provides a lot of smoothness to my aim. I just need to kind of work on the overall larger movements. And exercise is very important. That's actually a little case study that I have been doing, especially with these scenarios. Make sure you focus on clearing your mind having positive mental health when you come into practice, just very much as when you would work out and train. It's time to kind of get your body run right into shape. So you want to be in the right mental mindset, and you also want to make sure that you're keeping your body in tip-top shape. Because while this is a, a video game, it all also stresses your mind and stresses your body, and you have to make sure that you're taking very much care of what you're doing. So let's do the next scenario here. This one is Micro Start Track, one of my favorites. I really enjoy this scenario. micro movements and before it starts let's discuss it this is great for controlling recoil making sure you understand the small movements from bouncing back and forth it just gets you used to micro adjustments and it's a very vital scenario that was not here it's one of the newer ones but i have found that it's really great for apex legends controlling recoil and getting used and smoothing out your aim and realizing how much or little that you need to move so let's go ahead and start the scenario Pretty good run. Let's see where we sat on the leaderboard before. So we were a little bit shy of our prior score, but when you look at the leaderboard, it's important to look. So this is going to be an exercise if we look. What did we do before? We had 83% on screen tracking, so we're about 3% off from the normal tracking, which isn't bad. 
So utilize some of your scores and some of your prior history and even look on the leaderboards to see how people are doing with their time on and time off. So if I look in the average time on and time off, I'll see where, where I excelled and maybe where I didn't excel as much. This is a really fun scenario, and then you can even go to insights and see where your strengths and weaknesses are, which is very beneficial. What I have done for today, and this is another tip when we go into the next scenario here, I actually have changed my FOV. I know most people would kind of go into this trying to put their best settings, but I really kind of wanted this to feel very raw, just so you understood that not everyone's perfect, and of course everything you're working on is towards a common goal. I actually set this to my normal Apex FOV, which is at 110 field of view. And graphic settings, I set, set to a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So let's say you are a professional or working to become a professional CSGO player, or let's say you play at a different aspect ratio, you can change that so that then you feel a lot more comfortable. Now, if you are having difficulty tracking, you can change the FOV to get much closer so you can see the target so you're not as far away. Or perhaps you're having maybe issues understanding the scaling and the flick distance, you can change the field of view so you get a different perspective and angle. This is positives to do just to kind of get you perspective remember that field of view is all about just changing your lens if you compare it to let's say a camera if you're using a camera lens and you zoom in with it well that changes the field of view and you zoom out with it the camera isn't changing it still requires the same distance but it's definitely a very helpful trick so in this one that we're about to do i might hit reset here so we can take a look at it this one is a reactive one I, I really like the scenario for, for reactive. I'm going to restart it so we can talk about it a little bit more in depth as well. The reactive one is really beneficial in terms of making sure that you're flicking to right back onto the target. It's, it's a rather large target, as you saw there, but that's not a bad thing because the, really the focus is to make sure that you're flicking back and forth and reacting appropriately. This one will definitely vary depending on the time of day and make sure that you exercise, eating right, all of those things will come into effect as you work on the reactive change of what you're tracking. Now what's interesting is that you'll have more success with a faster sensitivity. And the reason why I'm logging most of my scores is usually to take the edge off, like I mentioned, you can set it to practice if you like, so you don't feel the pressure of like, oh, I'm logging on the leaderboard. I know that can be a little intimidating for some, but once you see on the leaderboard, okay, you got yourself a high score, you can take a look and compare yourself to how you're doing with others. And you know, not an overall bad performance just for doing these all back to back. I would say how much time you need to spend on these scenarios would vary depending on your overall goals. It's kind of like when you're working out at a gym, right? You need to compare and ask yourself, how much time do I need to spend to really achieve the results I'm looking for? I always recommend somewhere between 15 to 30 minutes. Each of these scenarios takes about a minute apiece. So we have five here. These are the new tracking scenarios. And just kind of recap the ones that we've already looked at. You're, you're looking at Sphere Track 90, Arc Track, Star Track, Micro Start Track, and Reactive Track. So we got a lot here. And these are all one minute apiece. And if you did them all three, you know, a total of three times, and that would equate to a total of 15 minutes. And at that point, when you hop in game, you should feel quite warm up, warmed up and pretty positive as you hopped into your games. And that's really the whole point. And when you start to kind of work on certain movements. So if we look at these scenarios and we were to ask ourselves, which one did I struggle with? I almost want to say arc track was probably the one I struggled with the most. Micro start track. I think if I had a good day, that seemed to be a scenario that I, that I started taking more seriously on the leaderboards just because I was really popping off with it. And then because I changed my sensitivity, start track, excuse me, start track 
probably one that yeah overall that I would just need to just spend a lot more time just because it, it, again why it's called Star Trek is as you can tell it kind of goes in a star shape and it's more linear I, I think overall that was probably my weakest scenario so kind of assess and really reflect and be be critical of yourself but not too harsh because you know that you're you're working to improve and that's the overall goal so what we're going to go through next are the Rainbow Six Siege scenarios what's really great about Aim Lab which I really enjoy is the variety that you see in a lot of the scenarios. It's not just grid shot. I know grid shot is very, very popular, but you can see a lot of improvement from switching things up. A lot of improvement from switching things up, things you're not used to. Even if Rainbow Six Siege is not your main game, there is so much to learn in terms of accuracy and overall improvement. So in this scenario that you're looking at, this is where C4s get thrown at you periodically. This will help on your precision and accuracy to help you improve your aim. Let's say you don't even play Rainbow Six Siege. There's a lot of applications for this, whether you're shooting something that may be running towards you or just trying to make sure that you're accurate. You don't want it to blow up in front of you. And that's the overall well, exercise and goal. So if you miss, it's perfectly fine. You get more points if you hit it while it's in the air. Just the goal is for it to not to blow up. You can move your character in game if you like. In this case, I'm going to have him stay still until I don't need to. Until I don't need to. Just kind of hold the angle. But if you want to throw yourself off, you can kind of jiggle peek left and right. Again, don't be turned off if you don't play Rainbow Six Siege because flicking to various small targets of various shapes at various angles can be very beneficial to improving your aim. Even if Rainbow Six Siege isn't even my main game, I, w I still actually thoroughly enjoy the scenario and definitely learned a lot from it. I always notice that I seem to be better when the targets are moving right to left rather than left to right so excuse me when they're going left to right I seem to excel more but if they're going right to left I struggled a bit more that's just my own assessment and you can also see from insights where you struggled the most if you were to do the scenario again definitely work on continuing to improve work on those flick shots try to have it flick and if you need to then you can move your character in the scenario if you like you don't need to you don't have to but it, you know it's always there as an option for you if you'd like and let's discuss what and I'm gonna switch to one of these that is really really cool we're starting to starting to hit some of the weak points with my aim you know tracking I, I kind of excel at and flicking from the battlefield days and even apex legends where we've hit masters we relook at siege entry this is a really interesting scenario because I don't have the most amount of CSGO experience I spent thousands of hours in aim trainers you know sometimes let's say you don't have all the time in the world maybe that's why you're watching this video maybe that's why you're hopping into aim lab it's perfectly fine this is why we have these exercises and these utilities to help you improve this is very popular you've probably seen a lot of youtube scenarios where somebody will breach a building and kind of work their way in so while this is labeled as rainbow six siege this is this is such a cool scenario i really really like this one i think it taught it taught me the most so far also there's one about memory where i was definitely struggling with but of course you move and they shoot back if you take a little bit too long so cutting corners and slicing the pie is very important you've probably seen that a lot in valorant as you cut and you want to stop your movement and take your shot and with this scenario you want to keep moving as fast as possible and as you continue to improve, you start to maximize on your movement and get faster and faster. And it's okay if you struggle a little bit. That's the whole point. There's only so many areas that an enemy can be. I, I understand this from Apex Legends. So if, you do, if you're not used to the overall map and you don't know where all the targets are, that's perfectly fine. And talking when you do scenarios, like I mentioned, it's not always the easiest thing. Sometimes that's why you hear people so quiet. You got to watch your back in various angles. That's why I got hit here. So good example of not knowing where enemies are. 
But remember, whenever you enter the room, there's only so many locations that they're going to be at. It's called slicing the pie, and this is such a great demonstration. In fact, it makes me it inspires me to make my own YouTube video on this specifically, just because it's so it's it's honestly a lot. Of, I can see myself popping in music and enjoying the scenario just endlessly. And you can hold shift to start to run a bit more. The goal is to keep, and we're gonna do this one again as we get a little faster. I breached incorrectly there, so cutting cutting the angle and slicing the pie. Slicing the pie. You know, I'm 